welcome to the dressmaking part of our class. So now is the time that you get out your fabric. So what you need to do is if you're going to wash it, you need to wash it how you want. You can wash it in the washing machine and then dry it. If that's what you choose, when you get it out, iron it flat and smooth and it'll be ready for you. If you choose to do like me, you don't have to wash it and you just iron it and it's good to go. Or if you also want to send it off to the dry cleaners, you can do that. So it's up to you. It's up to your fabric uh, choice that you've, you've chosen to see what you need to do. So we lay it all out. And a lot of this is going to be very much a repeat of the muslin. Okay, we're going to add to it. But a lot of this you will have already heard. So we lay it out flat. We find the selvages which are these edges right here that have a little bit of fringe you'll notice on the edges of them. And they're gonna be on kind of on your sides right here, going up and down. You're going to take your pattern pieces and before you ever cut anything, you need to make sure that you're laying them all out and making sure that you have enough fabric. Because sometimes you can just adjust it a little bit to make room for more fab or more patterns, excuse me. So don't cut before you, you do that. So what we're going to do is, like I said, it's really great to have a solid because it's going to help you fit the pieces in a little bit better. But if you wanted to buy more fabric, that's great too. For our situation here, what we're going to do is we are going to place our patterns face up to begin. So you can start with your start with your big pieces. You can start with number one, which is the front, or you can start with three. Doesn't really matter. But we lay them face up, and we're just getting a feel for how it fits on the fabric. So you're not pinning or anything. And so I've got my three right here. I'm gonna try to do it this way, but I'm gonna remember that oh, it probably is not gonna work because this is the same width as my muslin was, and so I'm a little bit shy. So what I did in the muslin was I had it here and it was fine and because it was a solid and actually this check is basically the same as a solid in the sense that it doesn't have a direction. So I can flip it over and remember you want a mirror image. So this pattern not only is it flipped over but it's backwards. So if I go to read it, it's backwards and that's how I know. So, okay. So we know that that's going to fit pretty well here. So that whole section is taken care of. I would move my fabric and I would do the same for the bigger pieces. I'm not going to go through all of them, but you understand. We'll do the number one piece as well. We'll make sure it fits and then we can flip it over and figure that out as well, or we can slide it down. It just depends on the size of your fabric. Now, what we also really need to make sure of is there are two pieces that need to be cut on the fold. So your fabric actually needs to be folded in order to cut those pieces because they don't have a seam in the middle. So we just need to make sure probably, you know, some of our scrap fabric, once we do these big pieces, there'll be a little bit of extra fabric. And make sure that you can then fold that fabric from selvage to selvage, okay? Because that's still gonna keep it on the grain line. So selvage to selvage, and make sure you have enough of your fabric then to do your two pieces. And I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So we have our fabric pieces number two and five. Okay, so once you have all the pieces, and again, you're not pinning down, you're just making sure that they, they theoretically fit. Um, and so we would just make sure that pattern piece number two would line up on the fold where it says center front on fold. That line then is gonna actually go on the fold. And you would smooth it out, you would pin it, and then you would also do the same for number five. Now, for me, number five is backwards when I go to put it on the fold. And that's fine because one way or another, it, one of them is going to be backwards. So it doesn't work to cut it out like this where I can read it because the fold line is here. So it's okay. If, you, if it looks backwards, it is okay. That is just fine. So 
These are your two pattern pieces that you need to make sure that there are there is room on your fabric to do it on the fold because that's really important. So once you have all of your pattern pieces where you know that they will fit on your fabric, now is the time to start pinning. So this is where we get it all lined up. And remember, a very important part of this is getting this grain of fabric line on grain. And we line it up with the selvage. So you can take your ruler or your measuring tape, whatever's most helpful for you, and you're going to line it up as best as you think you can, then put a pin in. Remember, we're, we're doing the same thing that we did with the muslin. We put a pin in, we put our ruler or measuring tape over, measure it, hold it, that's usually just the easiest, and put it at the edge of the, the selvage and just move our piece until it lines up again, okay? And then you put a pin right there at the top so that you know that this is completely on grain and it'll hang nicely. Once we've done that, we go through and we take our tracing paper. And remember, this can be however works best for you. You could use your single sheet of tracing paper or you could tape the pieces that came in the package all together so that you make one long line so that you're not having to move it up all over. It's whatever works best for you and you put it under your fabric and take your double tracing wheel and just go along the cut edge all the way up, okay? Because remember, you're marking where you need to cut and where you need to stitch. So you're gonna have two lines right there. Then you'll need to go back with your single tracing wheel and mark the important notches. So for this pattern specifically, number three, you're gonna to wanna to mark the size notches up here. There's XS, S, M, L, XL. So if your size is a medium, you would just mark a medium M, M. So there's gonna be two notches up there at the top. Then you'll come down here and you're gonna see some circles. You'll mark those on your size. Those are gonna be uh, where the pocket placement is. And then that's it necessarily for this pattern. Now, you'll notice we did not mark the grain of fabric line, nor did we mark all the way across this lengthen and shorten line. There's two of them. We didn't do that. But what I highly suggest is in this seam allowance, which is the 5 8 inch on the sides, I suggest taking that top line of each of the shorten and lengthen lines, so one right here and one right here, I suggest taking that top line and just marking it, marking a little line, okay? Doing that on the top line and doing that on the top line, of course, with your carbon paper underneath it so that it records it. And then coming over here on this side, doing the top line, marking that, moving this, marking that. And what that's gonna do then is you're not gonna lengthen and shorten this because we've already done that, that's fitting. So that's completely done but it is gonna allow you to help line up the two pattern pieces when you go to sew them. You're gonna know that those lines should match exactly to each other, and that'll just help you out. It's just one more piece of information that helps make the sewing a little bit easier and especially more accurate. So once you do this, you've got your pattern all completely done, then of course you're gonna flip it, okay? And we remember that there's not enough room, so we're actually gonna turn it upside down. And you have two selvages, one on either side. So I would just measure your grain of fabric line to the, the selvage that's closest to it. So in this case, we'll do this and we'll measure it. We'll put, put a pin in, come up here, measure it, put a pin in. And we're gonna do the exact same things. So you go through all of them, and again, you'll mark those top lines here in the seam allowance for that lengthen and shorten, and all your notches. The notches up here in the pocket, okay? And before you ever cut anything out, I want you to go ahead and trace everything, okay? Just, just, just to make sure that you are not too short. 
because it's much easier to go back through and retrace everything than it is to cut it and your fabric was not enough or, or you could have placed it better, okay? So just know that you want to go through and you'll see all the lines on the back and that's actually how you can cut it. You can just turn it over and cut it out on the back. So what I wanna show you now is what it's gonna look like when it's all cut out. All right, after you've finished cutting out all the pieces, let's make sure that we have it correct. So you need two number one pattern pieces that are mirror imaged from each other. So we have two of those. Then you need a number two piece, which is on the fold, okay? So it should look like this in the half, and then it's on the fold. We have two number three pieces, which is that skirt back, that are also mirror imaged of each other. Then we have pattern piece number four, which is the back strap, and we have four of those. So two of them are gonna have the slant the same way, so they're gonna be the exact same. Two of those. And then two more of the reverse. Do you see how that slant on the bottom is reversed? So it goes down this way and then down that way. So you have two of this and two of this to make four. Okay. Then your pattern piece number five is going to be on a half like this, but it was folded, so it will look like this. And then you need four of pattern six, which are the pockets, and they are going to look like this, okay? So there's four of these. There's two that are this shape and two that are this way, so they have mirror image. We're now here at the interfacing stage, and I wanna recommend one if you don't have one that you like already. I recommend the Pellon, P-E-L-L-O-N, S-F-101. And you can buy it in this bolt, or at your fabric store, you can just buy it by the amount you need. And this is a lightweight interfacing. I actually use it quite a bit. And on the front side, you'll feel kind of a fabric feel. It'll feel pretty normal. But on the inside, it's bumpy. And that bumpy part is the glue that you're actually going to fuse onto your fabric. So once you get it, you're going to want to take it and fold it in half for this particular project. I've got one folded in half because we need two of our pattern pieces to be on the fold. So you're gonna to wanna to get out your pattern piece number two, number five, and number four. And I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step exactly how to do this. So I will move these apart. And with your fold, you're gonna take your pattern piece number two, and it's gonna be very similar to how you've done in the past. You're gonna pin it right there on that fold line. And then you're gonna take number five, and it's probably gonna be um, upside, yeah, there we go. <laughs> It'll probably be upside down here so that that fold line is on the fold. Pin that, and I'm not heavily pinning. I could probably pin a little bit more, but it's gonna stay in place just fine. Then pattern piece number four. You're gonna to wanna to take your tracing paper, slide it under. Now, here's where it's a little bit different than what we did with our actual fabric pieces. I highly suggest only tracing within the seam allowance, so, or the seam line. You don't need that cut line because it's just gonna add a lot of extra bulk when you go to sew the, the garment together and you don't need it. Because interfacing is providing structure, you're gonna have structure in the seams and it's just, it's not needed. So what I suggest, you've already traced off 
that seam line inside the 5 8 inch from the cut line so you can probably already see it on your pattern I know I can see mine I can see where I traced it so I would take your single tracing wheel and I would just follow that seam line not the cut line the seam line and so I would put my carbon paper under there and just go ahead and trace off that seam line noting that you're also going to want to make a little mark where notches are so just continue on up always on that seam line and you're going to do this for all three of them you're going to go all the way down now these two are on the fold this is doubled so you only need to trace it off once because when you go to cut it you'll have two because it's actually folded it's doubled so I'll cut these out and then I'm going to show you what they look like on the fabric and actually how to fuse the interfacing to your fabric so this is what it should look like you should have it kind of in the middle of your pattern pieces and I have them all fused except this last one that I'm going to show you so go ahead and get your iron out get it turned on I'm going to show you what to do. You're going to want to make sure that this bumpy part is face down on the wrong side of your fabric. So this is the right side of my fabric. You can't see that interfacing. I've interfaced the wrong side. So you have your wrong side facing up and you put your bumpy side facing down on it. Okay right there now what I like to do always with interfacing is start from the middle and work outwards that's going to help reduce bumps and little air pockets in there and you also want to make sure you aren't actually ironing this is a glue and it's going to smear and it's going to crumple up your fabric so let me show you once you get your iron hot now this is such a small piece, I could just put this down one time and it would basically get it. But let me just show you what I mean. So I would put it down for about five seconds. And I'm not gonna move it at all. I've put it in the middle, and then I'm gonna lift up. And I'm gonna kinda smooth it, put it down again, and I don't move it for five seconds. Lift up. And I'll do that all the way through. And I'm gonna pay special attention to the corners those seem to not get fused as readily as the actual middle so if you notice anything is popping up just go back over it and just set your iron down go on the sides for just a couple seconds make sure that it's all nice and melded together and you'll notice once you have done that that your your piece is actually a little sturdier now from here we'll do some sewing all right, now our first thing that we're gonna do to sew our pieces together is to get the seam allowances under control. And so if you've got a serger, this is where you're gonna listen. You want pattern piece number one, number three, number five, and number two. You wanna get those all out and you're gonna start serging. So again, this is just for sergers right now. If you don't have a serger, you don't have to worry about it because I'm actually going to walk you step by step through the way that you can control these seam allowances at your sewing machine. There's a couple of different ways, but if you have a serger, it's actually much faster and so we'll start with that. So for pattern piece number one, on both pieces, you're going to want to, to serge the side seam and center seam. So basically both of these edges all the way down. You're going to serge that. On both pieces and then you're gonna want to serge up here at the top the shoulder seam just that little bit you do not need to serge this part okay so just that little bit then on pattern piece three you're gonna come over and you're gonna serge again the side seam and center back seam of both pieces now I haven't done it on this one because I'm gonna wait and show you how to do it at the machine at the sewing machine but if you have a serger go ahead and do that Then number two, pattern piece number two, you're gonna wanna serge 
at the um, shoulder seam right here and then at the end at the edge right up here pattern piece five you're gonna do it again at the bottom right there okay if you don't have a serger we'll start with our sewing here next and I'll see you in a minute so I'm going to show you how to do this on the machine, how to finish the raw edges if you don't have a serger. Now, my machine is a Brother CS6000i, and with that, I am at stitch number six. Now, you can reference your manual, and it will tell you which stitch is the best one to overlock the seams, or if you'd rather, you can just choose a zigzag stitch and you want to get as close to the edge as possible, you might actually need to practice on a little scrap piece of paper to see how far the needle moves. But I'm going to show you it on mine. So all I've done is I've taken, actually this is pattern piece number three, but it could be any of them, and I put it under my machine. Now I want my stitch to be as close to the edge, to the raw edge as possible, without really missing it and going way over it. So I've just put it under there. I'm going to lower my needle. You do not back stitch on um, finishing the raw edges. That's just for sewing a seam. And then I'm just going to stitch it. And it's going two and then over, one, two and over. And it is catching these raw edges so that I don't have to worry about it fraying if I was to put it in the washing machine or just wearing it, the, the fabric really will unravel. And so I will just continue this all the way down. I'll stop for now, but you wanna continue that for all of the pieces that we just showed you. All right, we'll see you back here shortly. Now that we have all of our raw edges finished, either by serger or the sewing machine, we're gonna start with pattern piece number three. And you're going to want to take that out and put right sides together. So that means that the right sides are inside. You're not seeing them. You're seeing your carbon tracing on the outside and the carbon tracing on the underside towards the table. You're going to pin your center front together. And you'll know that because the side seams are going to have the pocket placement lines. So if you see pocket placement lines, that's the side that's open. And you're gonna, um, you're gonna pin the center back. So I have that now. And you're going to want to return your sewing machine if that's what you finished the raw edges. You're gonna wanna return it back to your regular straight stitch. Mine is a double zero. And your stitch length is now 2.5. That's a good stitch length. That's usually what I end up stitching on most of mine. I'm gonna hold my thread tails, both of them if I can. Lower my hand wheel down. And then I'm gonna back stitch because we're actually stitching the, ste the seams and so you don't want it to unravel um, at the top. So we're gonna back stitch here. And then I'm actually gonna stitch all the way down with my um, carbon tracing line right on that needle. That needle is gonna be right there stitching on the carbon tracing line, so I don't have to worry about how to sew a straight line. I just follow that carbon tracing line all the way down with my needle. And then once I get to the very end, I'm gonna back stitch again. Always remember to take out your pins. You'll go all the way to the end, back stitch, and then I actually stitch forward. And then turn my presser or my hand wheel up and cut the threads. We're now at our ironing station. And before we begin ironing, I always like to cut the thread tails from the top and the bottom. It just keeps your pieces nice and neat and that way once you have your finished garment, it looks great and you don't have to go back and cut all the little stray thread tails. So, we're gonna press it two different times. We're gonna press it as sewn and that means just flat, flat like we sewed it. And so I'm just pressing, I might give it some steam all the way down 
and that's really just going to meld the stitches into the fabric. It just really sinks them in there. And it makes it really nice and crisp. Then we want to press it the way that our seam is actually going to be, which is not going to be flat. It's actually going to be open. So I'll take it. And I'll just run my iron through this seam, flattening it as I go, giving it some steam if you have it. If not, it's no big deal. It just really gives your dress a nice flat finish. So next we're going to go to pattern piece four. You're going to get out your pattern piece four pieces and there's actually going to be four pattern piece four pieces if that makes sense. So what you're going to do is you're going to do the same thing. You're going to put right sides together on two of them. And you'll know that um, it's correct if you see one side has the inner facing and the other side does not, but that they're both slanted in the same direction. That's how, you, so you want that slant exactly the same. And what you're gonna do is you're going to sew right beside that inner facing. You sew two lines, you sew one line on this side all the way down and one, line on this side all the way down. So you're going to leave the top open and the bottom open. Don't sew those. So you're going to do that for both pieces. These are your back strap pieces. Then you're going to want to take your safety pin or if you have a tube turner you could do that too but we just have a safety pin. So you're going to stick it in and you're just sticking it in one side. I like to do the interfacing side because it's a little bit sturdier. So I'm just sticking it in and I'm going to clip it on the outside there. Then I'm going to take this big end and I'm actually going to turn it inside. So I'm pulling it in and pushing it in. So I'll do that one more time. So I just want the top of the safety pin to go inside. And I'm going to push it in. Now, once it's inside, we're going to scrunch the fabric to it. So I'm going to push it as far as I can, not very far, and then I'm going to start pressing the fabric until I get to the open end, and then I'm going to gently pull the top part out. So I still have my finger on the back end, and I can see the top. So I now take the top. And what I will do is I will work this fabric around on top of each other. And it's just kind of fiddly, but it won't take too long. So you're just kind of pulling it up and around. And then once it starts going, you can take your fingers and just pull it. And I'm really not pulling on the safety pin too hard. I'm doing most of the bulk of the work on the back end so that I don't rip the safety pin out. So it just starts to turn naturally. And once it does, you can just pull it out. Now, you're going to want to do that for both pieces and then take out your safety pin. And then take it to your pressing station and iron it flat. So we wanna iron both pieces so that they're nice and ready to be attached to the back skirt piece, number three. So now we wanna take pattern piece number three, the skirt that's all sewn together, and have it face up, the right side up. And you're gonna take your two strap pieces, and you're gonna pay very close attention to the edges that are slanted. They should be mirror images of each other, and these are gonna go right here at the top. So you're going to look on your pattern, or your fabric, sorry, and on the back of it, it should have two lines on each piece, and that's going to be where your strap placement goes. And you're going to want to make sure that that slant is facing the slant 
of this skirt piece, okay? So you don't, there's one end that's straight across. That one is gonna go down. You want the slant right where those strap placement pieces are. And it should follow that natural curve of that waistband right there. And you're gonna wanna pin it. So the way that you'll know that you have it correct is if the strap and the edge are parallel to each other. And the reason I'm harping on this is because I have actually done it the opposite way initially and you'll get a bubble in the back so the, the strap won't fit correctly. So just make sure they're parallel and just put a pin in it and do that for both sides. So we'll just line it up. And then we'll be ready to add the facing, which is pattern piece number five, on top of this next. Okay, so if you don't have a serger, that's completely fine. You can finish the raw edges of your fabric on your sewing machine just fine. And in fact, a lot of machines have specific stitches for that very reason. If you don't, that's fine too. All you really need is a zigzag stitch to keep those edges from fraying. If you have a bunch of stitches, I would highly suggest checking your manual to see which one would be best for overlocking. And it'll tell you. For instance, with my machine for this brother, it's stitch number six. So I'm gonna go ahead and press that now. Change my stitch length to six. I've done it in orange so that you can see what this is gonna look like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to place one of my pieces here under the presser foot and hold my thread tails and put it close to the edge. You may have to practice a little bit to get the distance exactly right. Um, but what you're gonna do is let the machine stitch for you. You're just guiding it through and it's gonna go back and forth zigzagging on the edge, getting those raw edges under control so that it doesn't fray. So I'll do that now. I did mine pretty quickly and it's not exactly straight, but what you would want to do is make sure to really pay attention and get it straight on that edge. And if it's not, this is a good troubleshooting. You can take your scissors if you feel like it, if you want to, and trim close to that just so that those raw edges are nice and neat and tidy. Now from here, we'll go on to sew our clothes. Now from here, we'll go on to, to serge or stitch by machine all of the raw edges that we need to. So those include pattern piece number one, that's gonna be that um, the top shoulders, okay? The top shoulder and the side seams. Then pattern piece number three, which is what we have here. Okay, then you're gonna take pattern piece number five, which is this one here and you're gonna lay it right sides down. So the inner facing will be facing up so that you can see it, and you're just gonna lay it right on top of all of these, on top of your straps and your skirt. And you're gonna to wanna to pin through all of it. So line it up. Pin where the seam allowance is, where the seam line is. And I'm double checking, I'm pinning right where I know the seam line is on the front, and then I'm, I'm turning it over to make sure I'm catching that same spot. And if I don't, then I adjust the back part to fit so that I can make sure to get that seam line in my pen so that it's exactly where it needs to be. And I'm just gonna do this all the way across. A 
few other markers you have is you've also marked where your strap placement lines are on this interfacing so you'll know that you're lined up when you see that. And what we want to do next is we're going to be able to sew this but we need to take the pins out from underneath because inevitably you may sew over them because you can't see them. So go ahead and take out the pin that is holding just the strap to the dress that we first did. Now you'll still have pins on top here holding it all together but you just want to go to each one of them and find that pin and take it out. Okay, going to the machine, we're going to sew on this top edge right here where the seam line is, okay? Down here, you're going to sew following your lines. And my thread has gotten a little bit caught, so I'm just going to trim it because it just a bit so I'm going to keep going and you're going to want to pay special attention when you go over these straps a lot of machines have a little bit of trouble going from one level over a hump so just take it slow and just sew right over it And on curves, this one's not too bad, but on curves, if you need to, you can always leave that needle down, lift up your presser foot and adjust it and get it a little bit better. And like I said, this one's not so bad, but that will help in the future. Okay, we are now coming to our seam line for our skirt. And you wanna make sure underneath that your seam allowances are open. We don't wanna sew them to one side or the other. So just go underneath and make sure both of those seam, line, seam allowances are open. And then you can sew across that. And that will turn it. So we have successfully stitched all three pieces together. So I like to take it again to the iron and press that seam as it was sewn so that we just get those stitches melded into that fabric and it just makes it turn much nice, much nicer. It's really, really good. Okay. Then, once you have it sewn, you're going to do the same thing you did with the straps. Remember how we had the seam allowances at 5 eighths inch, just like all the other pieces, and then we cut halfway down it. And so that's what you're going to do with this. Okay, it's going to be obviously opposite your um, surged end. So it's this one that we just sewed, and you're going to want to cut about halfway through. Okay. You're just trimming the seam allowance. Being very, very careful not to cut through any of your other fabric. Sometimes for me, I like to actually 
turn it around like this and put my hand under it and make sure that nothing underneath is getting cut and just trim it. Now, the reason you're trimming it is because you really don't need this extra bulk on a curve that tends to bunch up and it's just not needed. Now, being that this is a curve, we want to clip it. So we're gonna clip it from both sides. So I'm just gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna open up. You know how we, we have two pieces of fabric, right? Because we have the skirt and this pattern piece number five. So pattern piece number three and pattern piece number five. And I'm gonna clip on the top to the seam allowance, or to the seam line, sorry. You do not wanna clip through that stitching, okay? So you're just, just tiny little stitches up just close enough to that stitching line, but not through it. And it really doesn't matter how far you space them apart. The reason we're um, stitching, or I'm sorry, clipping them is because when it turns, it's gonna allow the fabric to spread open instead of staying so tightly bound. So we do a few, a few clips right here, and then I'm gonna turn it over and I'm gonna do the same thing on the back. I'm just going to put my scissor in there and clip a little bit on this one back layer of fabric. Being careful not to go through. Okay. Our next thing that we want to do is we want to sew this seam allowance to our facing piece, this back facing number five. Okay, so let's get oriented here. We have our skirt back facing and this seam allowance right here is going to face towards the facing and we're going to stitch very close to this edge okay so you can watch me here so the seam allowance is facing this way and I'm going to make sure that my stitching is catching all of that. I'm gonna back stitch, always. And with my other hand, I'm just pulling out this seam allowance to make it go towards my back facing. And the way that I get a nice straight line is I just line up my presser foot with this seam. And I just stitch with that. And it makes it very close and very straight. And that's how I keep it all in line. Okay. Now at this point, I would check and look and make sure, am I catching the stitching? Am I catching the seam allowance? If not, you're gonna either want to try again or you're gonna to wanna to move over until you do catch it. Just mess with it until you get it right. But we're just gonna keep stitching all the way down. And I'm just feeling and making sure that seam allowance is towards the facing. On these curves, sometimes you get a little bit of a bunch of fabric, so that's when I lift my presser foot up and I straighten it out and get it all smooth so that I can start sewing again.
take it to the ironing board. Ooh, and that one was hot. <laughs> and we're gonna press it as we stitched it, just flat like this. And you don't need to crease it because um, this does want to make a, a turn. It wants to curve. So just kind of do the best you can at getting some of these because we do actually want to turn it. But because we've stitched it, it's going to turn so much more nicely. So it almost just wants to turn inside instead of you having to force it. So it's laying very smoothly and I have yet to iron it this way. So once we iron it, it's going to lay even more smoothly. And a little hint on this kind of a thing, anytime you have a lining or a facing, anything that goes inside the garment, you always want to see a little bit of this actual garment on the inside. So basically, when you're looking at the outside of the garment, you never want to see that facing come up. So your line, your... Um, your seam line needs to roll in just a hair so that it's it's really nice and pretty on the outside. So you don't actually want it on the middle. You want to roll it just ever so slightly inside. Okay, so that is all pressed. And we'll move on to our next section here in just a minute. Now that we've finished the back, we want to do the front. So go ahead and get out pattern piece number one, which will be the, the front dress part. And we're going to think that we did with number three, the back skirt. You're going to do it with number one. So take your, take your pieces and you're going to put them right sides together and you're going to find center front. You'll know center front because if you see pocket placement lines, those are the sides. So do the opposite and do uh, a seam down center front. You're gonna put it in your machine just like you did. You're gonna back stitch and stitch all the way down center front. Then you'll back stitch at the very end. We're back now with the pattern piece number one, which is the front. So now we're gonna work on the front. So get it facing where it's facing up and we're gonna take our pattern piece number two and take the right side and put it to the right side of the dress. So you'll be seeing the right side of the dress and now you'll be seeing the inner facing. So right sides together and line it up along the neckline and armholes. And then we're gonna pin it We're going to start pinning with just the neckline for right now. And there's different schools of thought about which way you should pin. Some people like to pin with the pins out so that it's easy to grab them when you go to sew as opposed to mine, I have to take them out this way. I, I prefer and do it this way because what I'm doing is I'm lining up directly the, um, the carbon tracing lines that we have here on the front and on the, uh, other piece and so that way I make sure that it gets it very very accurate so you do what works best for you in the end it's all pretty much the same so whatever you choose will be just fine okay so we're going to take this to the machine and we're just sewing this neckline. And 
And you'll notice I actually sewed forward first before I back stitched this because I was on the very edge. I'd put it a little bit too close, so I sewed forward first. Now I'll back stitch to lock that in place, and then I'll continue sewing. little bit slower on these curves and you know earlier I said you can lift up this presser foot shift it around while your needles down this is a great time to do it on this neckline where it's a very tight curve it helps keep the bunching at a minimum Now that you've sewn your neckline, we're going to take it to the iron, press it. We're just pressing it flat. And then, like the curves that we've sewn before, we're going to trim about half of it away. And you're trimming through both layers. Now again, you're going to um, basically cut little pieces. You're going to slice it right up to the seam line, just ever so often, and every you know every inch or so. It's really there's not a hard and fast rule. You're just trying to allow this fabric to spread open when it does turn. And if you find it easier, you can cut through both pieces of fabric at the same time. I'm actually choosing to cut through one at a time because it does weaken the fabric a little bit when you're cutting through both of them. And honestly, when you're putting your, your scissors into the fabric, if you do it one piece at a time, your scissor is gonna stop at that seam line, so you're really not gonna be able to cut through it. Versus if you just take both of them and just start hacking away, you may end up cutting your, your dress. So it's kind of more of a safety precaution. And like I said, it does help it a little bit. So I'm just taking little pieces to cut. Now, what you're gonna wanna do is I've turned it right side facing up and I want to sew all of this seam allowance that I just cut towards the facing, okay? So, and then I'm going to sew it just like that. So, this side is my dress right here to the left. To the right, my right hand is the facing, and my seam allowance needs to go under the facing on this side so that when I stitch it, it's all stitched together. this is so curved you're going to want to say pay special attention to getting that seam allowance to go towards the facing and that you are catching it while you're stitching it is a little bit 
bit trickier on the curve. Just take it slow. The fabric does bunch up a little bit, but you'll be just fine. Now that I've got my stitching, take it to the iron and you're just going to press it. And again, these are a little bit tricky spots because it is curved, but you can just do the best you can with the tip of the iron. You're not trying to press the whole thing flat. You're just trying to heat up that thread and the fabric. Okay, and then now we will turn it where it wants to go, and that is, it wants to go down. So without really ironing it at the moment, it's laying pretty smoothly, but I'll then go take it back to the iron and press on our new stitching. just adjusting that scoop neck right here and making sure it's all flat and pretty because that's going to be quite the focal point. So you just want to make sure it looks nice and neat before we crease it, before we press it in. And again, I'm seeing a little bit of that dress fabric onto my facing, okay, on this side because it's rolled ever so slightly towards my facing so that on the outside, you don't see that facing line at all. Okay. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we are going to sew the front piece to the back piece. And I'm gonna show you two different options. The first option is actually going to have no pockets in it. And I really, really recommend doing this option, especially if this is your first time making it and you adjusted the pattern in any way, shape or form. And the reason I suggest it is because your pocket placement lines, they should transfer pretty well, but because we've adjusted it, they might be off a little bit and it's just going to make it a little bit more frustrating for you if this is your first time. If you've made this before, you can skip over this part and then go into the pocket placement and we'll, I'll show you how to do that as well. All right, I'll see you back in just a moment. Once, Once you, you have, have the neckline, neckline done, done, we're, we're now, now going to go to the, the armhole. So, so you're going to want to turn this over to where you see the, the right side of the dress facing you. Flip out, out your facing, okay, and you're going to want to pin the armhole now, so facing to the dress. And, and so, so there's going to be a couple of, of bends that you could find, but you want to do, you want to bend it on your actual seam line. Don't bend it on your edge stitching where you attach the seam allowance. So find that seam line and take your, your fabric towards your facing and that's where you should line it up. And then you're just gonna pin. And honestly, at this point, it may not line up on the back. Um, this one lines up pretty well. Uh, my my um, carbon tracing lines. Sometimes I get a little bit off, um, but, but just follow your um, interfacing, and that should get you where you want to be if you're off. So we're just going to go here. A way, a way you can tell is um, you've made a notch here at this armhole, and so you can 
Find it on the other side. And that's going to help you line up. And so if you're not quite on there, I just kind of take my pin out a little bit and put it right on. And that's going to get me right where I need to be. Okay. And you're going to do this for both sides. Okay. Just start sewing this armhole. Go to the other side and sew it. And with this one, you'll notice I'm actually starting at the bottom, and that's just because I don't want the bulk of the fabric inside of the machine. So I'm just going to start here at the bottom of the armhole. the armhole as sewn. Press the other armhole as you sew you sewed it. And if we remember it's a curve on this stress so we're gonna do the same things we've been doing and that is to cut the seam allowance by about half. So we're just gonna trim it. We're going to go and flip it so that those curves will turn much better. And I'm going to do the back side of it just a little bit. Trim this side halfway. Do the back. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to take your finger and put it inside there, put it inside of the strap, and just kind of bend it and then bring your fabric out. So I'll do it again. all the way up. Okay. So. so we have our fabric. I'm just putting it in my finger, putting it into the opening of the strap inside the middle, scrunching it all the way down. Okay, until my finger is out. And I'm just kind of crooking my finger, just bending it a little bit, just like that. And then I'm just going to keep it bent, it's still bent, while I pull this out and it just kind of stays enough to where you can then pull it out. Okay. Now, we still want to edge stitch just like we've done before, where we edge stitch the seam allowance to the facing. However, you're not going to be able to get your needle all the way up into the strap now that it's turned. So we're just going to do the best we can. And so we just stitch until we really can't stitch any further. And that's probably going to be about that bottom third or so. So I'm going to take it to my machine. Make sure that the seam allowance is facing toward my facing. And be 
careful that your dress is also not getting caught up in this, um, this sewing. So just make sure to smooth out your dress because you only, only want your seam allowance under there. So I put my, my finger very specifically at the point where I had checked it. And so I'm keeping it right there so that I know that I can sew up until my finger and then I can check it again. And that's pretty much as far as I can go. I can go just a little bit farther to my, where my finger is again. But I'm gonna stop and back stitch right there because that's about as far as I can go. Put my top thread and then pull out and put my bottom thread. And so we'll just do this, do the same thing on this side. And this one, you're actually gonna have to have your fabric facing in the middle of here, but that's okay. Now we're going to take it to the ironing board and you'll notice that you'll have some stitching on your facing for just that bottom third or so and that's just fine. That's going to be enough to hold those seam allowances down and it's going to help you create a smooth and flat strap. And again, you want to roll that seam allowance toward the facing, okay? So you wanna see a little bit of your dress kind of on the inside so that it looks wonderful and clean and neat on the outside. Okay, from here we have the front done and the back done. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the two pieces, the front and the back, together. I'm going to show you two different options. And if this is your first time making this dress, I highly suggest making it without any pockets. I know pockets are fun. Honestly, you won't even see them. But it's best to make it without pockets just because we're trying to learn how to figure all of this out. And adding pockets into the mix is just another step that's potentially a little bit confusing. However, I'll walk you through it step by step, but if you made any kind of an adjustment to the front, such as the full bust adjustment, it makes it just that much harder to make sure that the pockets are all lined up. It's fine and you can do it, but again, I suggest doing it without pockets first, and then you can try it again on your next dress. So we're going to take our back and our front and put them together. What I want you to do is take your front and have the right side facing you, so you're seeing the pretty side, and then take your back and put the right side on top of it to where you're seeing the inside. You're seeing those surged lines and the carbon tracing that you have marked on it. So it's right sides together, and you're gonna wanna line up the edges. Now, again, this is for the no pocket placement here. We're just going to show the seam as is. Now you'll notice that your skirt back is likely um, a little bit smaller in width than your front and that's okay. So you're just going to line up the facings. You're going to flip those out. And what I like to do is I like to start right here at the seam line where we took our facing and our dress, facing and the back of the dress, and I like to line those up first. So I like 
like to get them right, right on right next to each other, not really on top of each other, but just those seam lines touching right there. And then I'll go and I'll put my pin in on the seam line. Oops. Okay. And you're going to want to also pin these facings to each other too, okay? So they are also right sides together. So I'm gonna pin all of this down and I'll meet you back here in just a minute. So now that you've got it all pinned, lining up the points where you need to, which the key points would be right here at the seam lines, You've also made those lengthen and shorten lines. So lining those up with your pins, that's gonna help you stay on target. And then your hemline, so just lining that all up. And then we'll go to sew, because we are not paying any attention to the pocket placements. We're just gonna sew it all the way up. So I'm gonna start at the hem and go up. Once you get towards the facing, you've been sewing at a certain angle and you're going to want to turn slightly. All you're doing is following your lines, but just to let you know, it is going to turn slightly and that is just fine. my threads and at this point you would also do the other side the same way then you're going to take it to your iron press it as sewn then you're going to want to open it up so that you can iron these seam allowances to both sides so I'll meet you back here in just a second. Okay, so next, if we're gonna do the pockets, this is what I suggest doing before you ever put the pockets on. If you've made any adjustments, I want you to go ahead and line up your edges for the front and back together. Put a pin in there, just keep it a little bit secure. And then I want you to find one of the pocket placement lines, probably on the back here, and make sure that they do line up with the front. If they don't, you're gonna just need to pick one of them because perhaps during the adjustment, maybe you didn't quite move the pocket where it was supposed to go. It's totally fine, but just be consistent and take the back pocket placements, let's just say, on both sides. And that way you don't have one pocket up and one pocket down, okay? You know that the back is correct because we didn't do anything to it. So just know that that's where that needs to be. That's where the pocket needs to be. And just make some kind of a mark. You can take a pen and you can mark it on the front side. You can just put a pen in there on both of those pocket placement lines. And that's gonna really help you keep those together. Now, we're gonna open it up. And on the front, I'll show you here. We're gonna put our pocket piece lined up with this side seam, okay? And we will do the same for the back. So get 
bring our back here. And those were right sides together. We're almost always sewing right sides together. So what you're going to do now is you're just sewing the pocket on to both the front and the back. So we'll start with the front. And I like to do an extra back stitch here because it's a pocket and you're, you're likely going to be putting some weight in there, pulling it a little bit. So after I hold my thread tails, I'll sew, and then I'll probably back stitch two or three times just to really secure that initial pocket in there. The same thing at the end, I'll back stitch several times. Take it to the iron, press it. Okay. And then I'm going to want to stitch it, edge stitch it down. So let's get oriented here. We have the side seam facing towards our right. This is how we sewed the pocket. The pocket was to the left. We're gonna flip it over, okay? And we want to edge stitch this pocket with this seam allowance facing it. And if you've laid it down flat, it'll naturally face towards the right here. So we just want to line up our presser foot. And again, I just like to line up that edge with the seam and that'll give me a nice straight line. So if you don't hold your thread tails, that is what can happen. Your threads coming out of your needle. We're going to press that so that it's nice and crisp. So you can see you spend a lot of time pressing probably just as much or more at the iron. Now, what we're going to do um, now that it's pressed is we're actually going to flip it inside. And remember how we like to always have the dress rolled in just slightly so that we're not seeing any inner works of the dress. Okay, so roll that seam in slightly. Okay. And I like to give it a good press here too, so that it stays very crisp. And we can use steam if you need to. Okay. And you're going to want to repeat this same process on the other side. So I'll go do that and then I'll see you here in just a minute. 
Now that you have your pocket sewn on, let's make sure it looks correct. So you've got the top of your fabric, your, your front dress, with the pocket facing out, right sides together, the back skirt, and now we're seeing the wrong side of the back skirt. And this pocket is going to just line up neatly. They should be the exact same shape with the other pocket. And you're gonna pin in pretty much the same manner that you would have done normally if there were no pockets. Start at the top here, start at that seam, that underarm seam. Instead of starting at the very top, you, you wanna start at that underarm seam and pin down. And then I usually just pin um, the, the facings uh, later here. So pin all the way down. Then when you get to the pocket, you're gonna wanna line them up And now you're pinning the pockets together to actually form the closed pocket. So you will um, just follow your tracing wheel, trace or the carbon tracing that you used earlier. And you might have a little discrepancy like I do. One of them's, it's not bigger, I just maybe didn't sew it exactly correctly. But that's okay, because you're actually gonna trim off this seam allowance anyway or at least half of it, so you won't even notice. Now you're gonna skip over pinning right here where the pocket is, okay? Because you actually want that open. So just, just start here and pin around, go through the pocket, and then come back at the end of that pocket and continue on pinning your front and backs together at the side seam all the way to the hem. And then we're going to sew. And you're gonna sew from the very beginning all the way to where you get to that pocket and then we're gonna stop. Okay, we've come to the pocket. And I'm going to back stitch a couple of times just because that is a stressor. And then I'm going to forward stitch until I get back to where I was. And leaving the needle down, pick up my presser foot and turn it so that I can now sew the pocket. So I'm just going to follow along. And I'm stitching on my pocket, being careful not to stitch through the dress. Okay, we're just now on the pocket. you need to just go slowly around the curves and just pick back up wherever it feels right for you. There we go. Okay. And stitch over that seam allowance to where I come to my carbon tracing. Then I'm going to go back a couple of times, again, just to keep that reinforced, then forward to get back to that stitching line, and then I can stitch the rest of the way down.
So now what we're gonna do is we're going to trim this seam allowance around the pocket. I'm gonna cut into it a little bit and I'm gonna trim about half of it off. And that just keeps it smooth and less bulk when it's inside of your dress. There's no need for all that extra fabric. Okay. Now you'll wanna open up your seam and press it flat. You'll only be able to go up to your pocket and but then you can start again. Right there. Okay, so your dress is coming to a close. What you need to do now, now that you have your top and your back together, or your front and your back together, you're gonna need to try it on. So, your front is facing this way, and when you try it on, make sure to bring either pins or a pencil, something to mark with, and you're gonna try to find out where these straps fit on you best, okay? And let's just say that that actually is where it fits well on my shoulder. I'm then going to take the back strap, so the long skinny piece on the back, and I'm gonna put it into the front, okay? So again, let's just say it's right there to me, this is a lot of extra fabric. So what I could do is I could actually cut this fabric off if you want to. You don't have to if that makes you nervous. Let's see what it looks like. We're gonna try to fit it in to the opening on the front. And I'm just kind of smushing it in with my thumb. And remember, I would have either put a pin there or something, so let's see. So say, say this is how we liked it. You put a pin right, right there on the front, front piece, and then you stick this all the way in until it reaches that pin. Okay, and, and then you know that you've got it. Now, this is, this is not very attractive. So what we're gonna do is we're actually going to fold this under, okay. Fold it to the inside to where we don't see any of that. And then it's gonna be a nice, smooth seam right there, okay? And so what you'll do is you'll do that to both sides, take the pins out, and you'll just go to the machine and sew across it. So. If you want a nice even line matching up with um, this folded line, I usually use a presser foot with the part, so I line up my presser foot with this folded line and that's gonna give me a good parallel line with it. And I would back stitch, back stitch it, and then continue to sew across. Now, if this is extra thick, you might need to kind of help it along until it, you know, until it kind of moves onward. There we go. And so, you just finished sewing it at the end. Okay, 
So that's what it will look like when you're all done. Then our very, very last thing to do is to hem it. Now, if you made no adjustments whatsoever, this fit you perfectly out of the envelope, you're just gonna you're just gonna hem it. But if you made a full bust adjustment, you're gonna need to try it on again. And remember I told you it would be best to leave some extra fabric on that front piece just to make sure that you had enough room. You're gonna need to figure out how you want to adjust that as far as do you need to make it longer in the front because it's pulled up so high? Um, you just see what works best for you. Um, for us, we're gonna say that everything looks great. So what we'll do, since we're not gonna make any changes, is we're just gonna fold this up to the seam, to that carbon line, okay? Our seam line. And we're just gonna fold it up and put a pin in. And you can do this all the way around. Okay. And you'll have a little bit of some rumpling. That's what I like to call it, I guess. Um, because the width of the bottom is actually larger than when you're folding it up into a smaller circumference. So it's okay that you'll have some bunching you just want to do your best at flattening it down. Now, I'm not going to sew all this away, all the way around here, but you know that you are. And so what I like to do is I usually like to start sewing on a side seam. I don't like to start right in the middle of the front of the dress. Um, so once it's all, all up, I just take it to the sewing machine and What's really important here is because your stitching is going to show if you do it this way. You want to find something to help you keep a straight line. So what I recommend, the easiest thing I can recommend is the presser foot width. And I would line up your presser foot right at the edge of that fabric. And that's going to give you one nice even line all the way across because all you have to do is make sure that that fabric is directly in line with that presser foot. So once you finish your hem, you are completely done with your dress and I am so excited that you finished. I can't wait to see your pictures. And I wanted to remind you if you'd like to join the free Facebook group we have, it's called Sewing Clothes for Beginners Community. And it's going to be a place where I can help you. If you have questions, we're going to learn how to do a lot more things in there. I'm going to show you how to make this belt that is very, very simple. I'll show you how to make, I had some bows on one of the black and white dresses that I made, just different variations. I'll help you with the shawl and different variations with that. And we're just going to keep learning how to sew clothes through this community. There'll be tips and tricks and I'll be in there and I would love for you to join. So again, it's called Sewing Clothes for Beginners Community. I can't wait to see you in there. Bye.